and welcome to Narwhal Labs. My name is Isla Foxlin, and I've been given free reign to do a project with you guys today, so I'm gonna take full advantage, and we're gonna be making a laser-cut stained glass using epoxy. <laughs> the subject matter I picked for the stained glass is really special to me as a fellow aviatrix from Ohio. The Spirit of Columbus was the first aircraft flown around the world by a woman by Geraldine Mock in 1964 in a Cessna 180. And she was just a housewife in Ohio who flew around the world and no one knows about it or talks about it. So I want to use this opportunity to not only make an awesome epoxy project, but also to spread some knowledge about her accomplishment and what it's contributed to the world. Without further ado, let's get started. To make files for laser cutting, I really like drawing on Adobe Draw on my iPad. And then when I'm done, I'll just send it over to Illustrator and use that file on the laser. All right, now that our file is done, we can head to the laser cutter. And here at Narwhal Labs, we have a Thunder Laser Nova 35. Thank you to Thunder Laser. So I'm just going to load up my material. So I've preloaded the file, so we're just gonna hit start. Ready? Ooh, there it goes. All right, and now that the laser cutter is done, we can just come in here and with Thin lines like this, you're going to want to be really gentle as you pick it up. Okay, so our next step is that we need to seal the wood. And you can sort of think of this like priming, but basically we're going to paint on a thin layer of Total Boats 2 to 1 epoxy resin with slow hardener. And what that's gonna do is seal the air so that we don't get bubbles in our final pour and also protect the color of the stained glass from the char. That's just a side effect of laser cutting. To use one of these, the first number is gonna be the first ratio amount that you need. And then the second number is the second ratio amount. So for example, it's two parts of resin to one part of hardener. So I'm gonna pour up to one of the numbers. In this case, I don't need very much, so I'm gonna use one on the two column, and then with the material I need one part of, I'll pour up to the same number on the one column. Nice, my hair is in the cup. Classic. Never not had that happen. So that was, we're up to the one line on our two column. And a very random tip that my uncle taught me is when you pour from something that's this shaped, when it's full, it's easier to pour that way instead of this way because you get a steeper angle so you have more control. Thank you. And then you have a magical popsicle stick up here out of thin air because that's how amazing this world is. And When you're mixing, you want to make sure that you are going slow enough, you're not introducing too much air, which is bubbles, into your epoxy, but also make sure you're constantly scraping the sides and the bottom. Otherwise, you'll end up with sticky clumps, and that is not what you want. Hashtag sticky clumps. All right, once you have successfully subjected yourself to three minutes of mixing, you can now paint. Using either a bristle brush like this one or a foam brush, you can just start slathering it on. And the key here is just to make sure you cover all of the wood. When you're done sealing all of the inside edges, it's time to seal the top as well. So I'm just gonna grab a brush and pretty much do the same thing. Just paint it on and make sure you're, you can watch, I mean the wood changes color when the epoxy properly seeps into it. So that's how you know. But as you can see, this whole process takes a little while. So with the magic of video editing, we are now done. Do you wanna switch this now? Yeah, we can, we can switch it. All right, so now it's done. Magic. So the next step is that I'm going to lift this, and this will magically disappear and turn into a polypropylene sheet. 
This is my, mag my second magic trick of the day. Magic! And now I just need masking tape. Hey, I'm very surprised I caught that, actually. That was headed for the clamps. Just, just saying. <laughs> All right, so now that our edges are all sealed, time to pour, mix, mix then pour, preferably in that order. This is the part you're all here for. Now we mix. A few minutes later. And we're gonna mix. And we're gonna mix. And we're gonna mix. A little later. So why we're doing this, by the way, is so that the colors don't bleed into each other. Like there's gonna be gaps on the bottom under the laser cut wood. And so if we have like a red and a white next to each other, we wanna make sure they don't mix. So the clear will make sure that every color has its own like bucket, basically. If you don't have a sheet of polypropylene, cause this can be pretty expensive, you can also use either like masking tape or shipping tape or tuck tape face up. Um, so you basically just like, masking tape the holes shut. And that also does a pretty good job of making sure you have separate cavities. So that's what I've done personally when I'm doing this project. Um, but this clear coat is a slightly more foolproof way of making sure there's like no color bleeding. If you're interested as well, Evan and Caitlin did a video on a similar process and it has a lot of great information. So please check it out. It's in the description below. All right, and once that is fully cured, you can remove it from our polypropylene sheet. So I'm just going to peel off the tape. <laughs> How cool can I make peeling basking tape look? <laughs> there we go. And there we have it. So now our next step is we just need to color in the lines, if you will, with our colored resin. So now it's time to add our colors. And I have a set of alcohol inks as well as the Total Tint kit. And I might use some mica pigments later. We'll see. Since I don't have like the clearest vision of what I want yet, I'm gonna start with the plane and I have a reference image of the actual aircraft here. And so I'm gonna do the red and the white and then decide how I wanna do the waves after that. This is how indecisive people do arts and crafts. This is a Cessna 180, which is the predecessor to the Cessna 182. And it is a tail dragger, which means that it has two wheels in the front and then one wheel in the back. And the 182, which is the more mo modern version, is a tricycle, which means it's got a nose wheel and then the two wheels are behind that. Fun facts with Xyla today.
right, so now that this is done, we're gonna go home, sleep, and come back, and it'll be cured. 24 hours later. All right, so it is now the next day, and the epoxy has cured. So let's take a look. Um, so the next step is to protect it. So epoxy yellows with exposure to UV light, so that's why we need to varnish it to protect it from UV. So especially because this is stained glass, so it's going to go in a window. So I'm going to use Halcyon, and this the key with Halcyon is to go in really thick because it will self-level, but if you go in too thin, then you'll get some brush strokes. So you want to mix up your Halcyon just by squeezing the bag a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna pour it into a cup. Now the nice thing about Halcyon coming in a bag is that when you're done, you can squeeze the air out of it. So until you can see like the varnish come up. And that will prevent the varnish from skinning, which is just wasted product. Now I'm just gonna use a foam brush and lay it on really thick. The other thing that I really like about Halcyon is that it's water-based, so it doesn't have like all the toxic chemical smells that typical varnishes have. As you can see, I'm not wearing a respirator, but I would if I was using any other kind of varnish. Halcyon dries pretty quick, so we're gonna wait about an hour, hour and a half before we show you the final product. So, time warp. So the Halcyon is now dry, and this is what it looks like. Hopefully this opened your eyes to what can be done with a laser cutter and epoxy, which is honestly one of my favorite combos, but I think is super underutilized. So this is just how I do it when I make fake stained glass, but I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. We're happy to answer any questions. And what would you make with access to lasers and epoxy? Tag us, let us know. And now let's cut to the beauty montage.